Welcome to today's episode of The Strength Show. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to eat to fuel performance and also reduce inflammation. Now, one of the key things I see happening a lot is people actually aren't feeding their bodies and looking after their bodies to achieve optimal results, whether it be building muscle or burning body fat. And it's a bit like trying to drive a car with a handbrake. So in this episode, I'm going to help you drop the handbrake and accelerate your, your results with some really easy strategies and things you can implement. Now, first but not least, First thing you want to think about that most people overlook is what's called your um, gut brain axis, so digestion. So if your digestion is screwed up, this is a big problem. So if your gut is inflamed, this is going to be make fat loss harder. Now, what we have to think about here is, do you have an understanding of how foods are making you feel? Do certain foods make you feel um, bloated? Do certain foods give you a bad stomach? Do certain foods make you gassy? If they do, those foods you should not be consuming. And a good way to get a good ballpark on whether the, something is uh, an issue is you should get a food intolerance test done. Now, I had a food intolerance test done, and I was actually surprised some of the things that were brought on it. Uh, a lot of things I liked a lot, like you know, mushrooms, asparagus, egg whites. Um, and this is a key thing for you to understand is like these foods that you might be eating quite frequently could be causing issues in terms of inflammatory responses within the body that are going to slow fat loss down inhibit muscle wound and also make you feel a bit shitty. And what we want is you to feel about peak performance at all times. So, so red flags are things you never want to be eating. Trans fats, so, and processed oils. We want to be avoiding foods like that, like the plague. That's probably the worst thing out there in terms of food you could be consuming are things in my trans fats. I think like really heavily fried foods, um, deep fried chicken, a lot of this stuff is in shitty oils. Next to these things like high fructose corn syrup, so if you look at things like uh, pop tarts and stuff like that, it tends to have high fructose corn syrup in the back of it, if you look on the labels. And an easy thing to do when you look at labels of products, right, is the less they have, the better it's going to be for you generally. So we ideally want to be eating two things, a Mediterranean diet and a single ingredient vitamin diet, basically. So for example, an apple, the ingredient list are an apple. A chicken breast, the ingredient list is a chicken breast. There is nothing else. That's what we want on our foods that are single ingredient items. And they're the best foods for your body. Now, when it comes to how this can help you achieve peak performance, this will aid in terms of how your digestion is working, how your digestion is flowing. Secondly, with digestion, we want to look at it in terms of the amount of fluid you're taking every day. So most people don't drink enough water or don't have enough salts and electrolytes in the system. So the first thing you want to do to achieve um, physical and mental peak performance when you wake up is hydrating. So I'll drink half a litre fluids and add some electrolytes to that. Another suggestion I think we have a lot of people, particularly if you live in a warmer climate, like currently live in Dubai, um, is adding pink Himalayan salt, good quality salt to your food. So for example, for me, I had two grams of salt per meal. So I have about 10, 12 grams of added salt per day. Now, you might not need that much depending on your body weight, but I would suggest for everyone, you probably would be adding at least five to six grams of salt. This will improve muscular contractions, the way you think, Often one of the reasons, if you get brain fog late in the day, this is often because of um, electrical, being depleted electrolytes, and that's why we can't focus. So if you're in that position right now, give it a try this afternoon or today, plow yourself with those electrolytes, see if you can focus better. Keep yourself hydrated, see if you can focus better. Now, coming to hydration, one of the things people make a lot of mistakes with is alcohol. So we have to remember alcohol is a diuretic. So that means that it's going to basically deplete our body of water and electrolytes, um, if you ever want to go on holiday and look shredded, drink a load of gin tonics and like before you go on the beach, you look pretty good. Um, but for performance and the way you think, this is not what you want to have. So the reality is we want to try and minimize alcohol around any workouts or anything with a lot of public function involved. Second to that big thing that um, has a huge amount of impact, which is also caffeine. So I love caffeine, but we also have to remember that um, caffeine is also a diuretic and also a laxative. So if you have a lot of coffee, it can make you go to the toilet a lot and pee a lot. Same as if you notice, I don't know if I take any drinks. As soon as you drink any drink, I need to piss. So it's like it's flushing fluid through you. And, and that's okay. But it's just a reminder to make sure that your what goes out comes back in again, if that makes sense. And um, this is really, really, really important. Now, we look at like some supplementation to help you achieve peak performance with your body. There's a couple of things I recommend. One. Uh, I give you use digestive enzymes with bigger meals. This will help a lot in terms of dissimilation of food. So it's not what we actually eat, it's what our body is assimilating our faith that's important. Number two, we'll be using a high quality fish oil. So you only get at least five to 10 grams of essential fatty acids every single day. And I would recommend using something like um, Nordic oil, something oil you actually keep in the fridge and you take a teaspoon of. It doesn't taste the best or the worst, but it's it does the job and literally can add years to your life. And one of the reasons the Mediterranean diet is so good in terms of a health perspective is it's very high in essential fatty acids. So this is one of the things you really need to make sure you have in your diet, and most people are really, really lacking. 
Thirdly, um, I would say like, I call it multivitamin and mineral because that will cover pretty much all the bases in terms of any holes in you having your nutrition. Now, to make sure you don't have holes in your nutrition, here's what I would do. You want to make sure all the time you're eating, you have a plethora, I hope you like that word, plethora of different colors on the plate. So if you think like greens, blues, reds, yellows, and this is different like vitamins and minerals in these foods. So you don't want everything to be like gray, like chicken and rice with no veg. You need to have these foods here to have the nutrients, also the phytonutrients within those, which are really important. Superfood I recommend everyone eats, like hammer, is blueberries. So like one of the highest foods in antioxidants and preventing against free radical damage, which is like damage to your cells, which can go on to like causing cancer and other diseases and also reduce inflammation. Inflammation is the number one cause of disease in the human body. And the more we can control that, keep inflammation down. And you'll see that on a blood test, which will what we call CRP score, better your body will perform, the healthier you'll be, the better your joints will feel, the better you can think, and the better your life you have. So these are the key things you really want to think about about keeping inflammation down. It's just by making sure that you're not doing things that are causing problems in the body. Now, we talk about causing inflammation in the body, this can also be caused by exercise. So if you're getting pain in a certain movement, doing a certain exercise, you're either doing it incorrectly or you've got some type of issue now. The worst thing you can do is stick your head in the sand and keep doing an exercise even though you get pain. For example, if you're getting shoulder, like I was getting shoulder pain doing like a seated machine lateral raise a couple of months ago, like two months ago, so I just did a standing one that didn't hurt me. Now I can go back and use the seat one now, and it's fine. But if I continued using the seat one, I would have seated the lateral raise machine. I would have ended up with some type of issue because then I had some type of tightness, some type of impingement, and my body wasn't happy doing it. I didn't force my body to go and do something that it didn't feel right to do. And this is an important thing you really need to hit home is that um, if you try and push your body to do something it doesn't want to do, it will push back. And it can push back so hard that you then end up with a major injury that means you can't train and your physique degrades. And the most important thing I want to finish on this podcast today, I want you to think about is this. Most people think about fitness as a finite game, as in there's an end result. Fitness is an infinite game. You don't get in shape and just stop eating healthy and give up because you end up fat and you're putting the dying. So fitness is an infinite game. Have the infinite mindset. I remember the point of the fitness game is to stay in the game. And that's what's going to get you long-term results and get you health and happiness. Hope this episode of the podcast was helpful. Make sure you give us five pound views, subscribe. Watch it on YouTube, drop in calls below any questions. And we'll see you next episode very soon. If you need help building your ultimate high performance body, message me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, and every other platform in the sun to find out how we can help you. And we'll see you next episode very soon.